I bow in humility to Almighty God, but thank you for the honor and the privilege of being able to stand behind the sacred desk for all the time. I do not take today lightly. I really do not. And uh, I want to thank Charmaine, Elizabeth, my daughter-in-law, Shamita, my sister and my brother brothers. George will be playing for us later. My son Jay, my granddaddy and Kara. Thank you so much. Bless Nation and Susan. I must have some more preliminaries I will not be here in front of the long today. But um should we not put the check in the mail this week? <laughs> Thank God for my loving husband, Willie. My husband, 37 years. The love of my life for all eternity when I didn't even know I existed. God designed him just for me. Because he designed me in such a way he knew I was going to need somebody to put my mask. <laughs> Thank you for everyone being here. Um, I want to share something with you. You know, we have a tendency to, people tell you, oh, you just do too much, you just go, you just go, you just go, you just go, you just go. And you know, they really don't understand what's going on. So I'm gonna read something, this is an excerpt from Joyce Meyer's book, The Confident Woman. A woman goes to bed. Mom and dad were watching TV and mom said, I'm tired and it's getting late, I think I'll go to bed. She went to the kitchen to make sandwiches for the next day's lunches, rinsed out the dessert bowls, took meat out of the freezer from some of the following evening, checked the cereal box levels, filled the sugar container, put spoons and bowls on the table, and started the coffee pot for brewing the next morning. She then put some wet clothes in the dryer, put rolled the clothes into the wash, ironed her shirt, and sewed it on a loose button. She picked up the game pieces back on the table and put the telephone book back in the drawer. She watered the plants, emptied the waste basket, and hung up a towel to dry. She yawned and stretched and headed for the bedroom. Hmm. She stopped by the desk, wrote a note to the teacher, counted out some cash for the school outing, and pulled a textbook out from under the chair. She signed a birthday card for a friend, addressed the staff envelope, and wrote a quick list for the supermarket. She put the book in the purse. Mom then cleaned her face, put on moisturizer, brushed her, and flossed her teeth and trimmed her nails. Hubby called. I thought she was going to bed. She said, I'm on the way. She put some water into the dog's bowl and put the cat outside, then made sure the doors were locked. She looked in on each of the children and turned out of the bedside of them, hung up a shirt, threw some dirty socks uh, in a large basket, and had a brief conversation with one child still up doing homework. In her own room, she set her alarm, laid out clothing for the next day, straightened up the shoe rack. She added three things on her list for things to do the next day. About that time, about that time, To no one in particular, I'm going to be, and he did. <laughs> we are busy women as warriors. <laughs> women, this <laughs> truth, women warriors of faith stand in firm, firm on the word of God. If you were asked to name someone a female that you would classify as a woman warrior, who would it be? Would it be one woman? Would it be seen a warrior princess? Would it be Chad Or maybe Deborah and Joel? Oh, I know that one. Esther. But what if I told you that you and I have known and daily come in contact with numerous women warriors. Now, what I'm getting ready to do, I'm going to take you back, but let's just stay stateside. Feel free that if I call someone that I inadvertently could remember, because I am 64, okay? My mind is 36. But still, we're, if you feel free to call, I say, what about Sister So So, okay? you all know or remember my mom who wanted to be here today she's getting ready to turn 93 she's having some issues with her knee and he ran a picture with the picture up she was hurting so she was not here but my mom her opinion 
Convenience Homes, aka HP, which stands for horsepower. And I don't know where that came from. My mother in law, Sarah Holiday. Sister Gil Roberts. Yes. Eliza Williams. Sister Janine Cephas. Sister Hughes. Sister Stackhouse. Sister Martha Moore. Sister Sue Sister Jamie B. Shaw. Sister Lottie Bannon. Sister Esther Pearl Thomas, Sister Fanny Fox, Sister Pearson, Sister Pearson, Sister Martha Starborough, Sonny Thomas' mother, and so many others. And then if you look around here today, you see Sister Lady Jane. You see Sister Sarah Sparks, Sister Daisy Freeman, Sister Emily Leslie, Sister Austin, Sister Scott, Sister Andrew Smith, and others who would probably, you would not pitch them as warriors. Is there anyone I miss? Just call their name out. Come on. Come on, feel free. Ruth Hamilton. Ruth Hamilton, what does this thing say? It's our day, baby. Come on in, anybody. Who? Sister Shirley Scott. That's right. Sister Shirley Scott. There's Sister Austin, the warrior. Come in. Warriors as barbarians, ruthless, mean, murderers, and more. But I have come to dispel that rumor. Some warriors are quiet, humble, and just plain sweet. First, what is a warrior and what does a warrior do? I'm glad you asked. The definition of a warrior is a brave or experienced soldier or fighter, fighting man or woman, serviceman or woman, combatant, fierce warrior. Miriam Webster defined a warrior as a person engaged or experienced in some struggle or conflict. Dictionary.com gave this definition. A person engaged or experienced in warfare, soldier, a person who shows or has shown great vigor, courage, or aggressiveness, as in politics or athletics. Now, Miss Brenda Fong, she's into politics. Come on, girl. Vocabulary.com adds this. Although logically linked with some in, someone engaged in war, a warrior can be anyone who fights the good fight. Arthur Carlos Castanilla quoted the following in reference to a warrior. Nobody is born a warrior. In exactly the same way that nobody is born an average person. We make ourselves into one or the other. Today I have come to shed some light on our role as women warriors of faith. First, we have to decide, are we wounded women or warrior women? As sisters in Christ, we have the tools necessary to help each other be the latter. But first, we have to get beyond being formed. Any of us can easily become a wounded woman without even thinking about it. Hurtful remarks from others, stolen dreams, disappointments in relationships, or just a circumstance in life that seems unfair, and it can make us cower in feelings of weakness and failure. Add the wounds from our childhood to that, and we are all a rough, shock, class act mess. But you don't have to live that way any longer. Each day we are bombarded with circumstances and people that test our strength and tenacity and our focus. We are constantly finding ourselves in a time of testing and a time of war. We constantly are reminded that we as women need to know our place. You know what I always say, my place is at the mall. <laughs> Come on. This time of war could be an emotional war, a physical war, a psychological war, a financial war, and yes, especially a spiritual war. It is at this time that we are going through boot camp. We are being prepared for the battle that is sure to come. These wars seem to come from nowhere when we are not even thinking about such things. Things are going pretty good right now. We say that we trust God to fight all our battles. But when the time of war comes, 
become space of faith with our doubts, our questions, and the rubber meets the road, it is then that we try to hide the fact that maybe we do not trust God as much as we say we do. Ephesians 6.12 tells us that if we are followers of Christ, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rules, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. That tells us that we ought to be warriors, not women who wallow in our wounds. Scripture exhorts us in Ephesians, Ephesians 6, 10 through 11, to be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power, and to put on the full whole armor of God so that you can take a stand against the devil's schemes. In other words, you can't be half-dressed and expect victory. When I say half-dressed, I'm talking about thinking you can figure it out and you can work it out on your own without Christ. It is at these times we really need to recognize the fact that without Christ and the Holy Spirit leading, guiding, and fighting our battles for us, we are losers in a world called life. And this world the only way we will come out as winners is to stop choosing your battles. Leave that to God Almighty. Instead, choose your victories, which is by standing firm on the word of God. But even then, you must wear the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And one thing about God, when he says all, he means all. When he says to everybody, it means to everybody. He said all things work, and he means all. When he said no weapon from he means no. Live, stand, breathe, anticipate that the word of God is firm. There's no gray area. It's clear. You know, for years we say, now, uh, if God said, I believe that salvation. No, God said that salvation. Whether you believe it or not, you can stand firm on the word of God because he's already proven, hey, I'm all that, a bag of chips and everything else. I am almighty God. There's no question about who I am or what I'm capable of doing. Those fiery barks pierce our hearts. They stab our minds. They condition our thinking. They convince us that God's words are lies and the enemy's words are true. Which sometimes are our own thoughts and sometimes actual words spoken to us through other people. But scripture tells us to put on the whole arm of God as a defense against these lies, accusations, and fiery lies. I couldn't help but think about how many of us fall prey to the flaming arrows of fiery lies of the enemy because we believe his, his lies. We react in such a way that gives the enemy, Satan, access to what should be our most guarded weapon. You may ask, what guarded weapon? Once again, I'm glad you asked. Our guarded weapon is faith, not the faith that you think about, but faith that is put into action. Faith that is a lifestyle. Faith that is rooted and grounded in the in and on the word of God. Looks like it's time for a little Imagine this. It's getting dark outside. You are home. And you have the blinds wide open. Then you see who you know is a thief laboring outside your home. You leave the blinds open. You don't run the phone too. You are ready to start cooking dinner with the blinds on. And you realize that the main ingredients you need were never picked up and they still at the grocery store. You commence to pick up your purse, which is in wild the sight. The blinds are open, the beef stand on the side, you see if you know he's out there. In a hurry, you realize that you forgot to lock the front door. And you return to the house. You lock the door and turn around, give the thief the keys to your house, and tell him you will be back in half an hour. You then go so far as to tell him to make himself at home. And when you get back, he should stay for dinner, dessert, and coffee. Do you see why I'm going to be here? 
as long as you in your house, or as they say, on your turf, and are standing in and on the firm foundation on the word of God, you have the upper hand. You are the one in control. When you live a faith-filled life, you can walk confident, not arrogantly, confidently, in the fact, in the face of what I like to refer as our in-between times. Knowing that no matter what or who God has allowed in your life at that season, even then God has got it. Finish this for me. He's Alpha. He's the beginning. He's the first. Now, as real warriors, we know that even the in-between belongs to God too. Okay? We're going to have some in-between times. But he still got it. What the thief does not see or does not know is that in the corner by the stove is your fully loaded and double gauge shotgun. And on the other side of the kitchen, where nobody can see him, is a 93 pound pit bull and a 116 pound double. These are your guarded weapons. And you do know how to use the gun because you've been trained. And because the attention and the love and the care that you show your dogs, they will fight to the death to save you. Christ's death on the cross is our victory. As long as you have faith in all that Christ has given you to be equipped for war, you are at an advantage over the enemy. Next time the enemy starts shooting his fiery darts into your heart and mind, making you think you are defeated, don't shrink from the attack. Don't become a wounded woman who falls prey to his lies, accusations, and deceits. Instead, be a warrior woman. Knowing the truth of who you are and the power of Christ when you stand firm, clothed in Christ, by abiding in the character and the identity of Jesus Christ. Let me break it down. How do you dress a war? First of all, it's the levels. Scripture tells us to put on the whole armor of God as a defense against those lies, the accusations, and the fiery thoughts. What does it mean to actually put on the armor of God? We're not just putting on another outfit as usual, but we soon look. We soon look. We are to fasten the belt of truth around our waist. Which means to know at the core of our being that Jesus is the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We are to wear the breastplate of righteousness. Meaning we are to cover our hearts with Christ, who is called the Lord of righteousness. We are to take up the shield of faith in order to extinguish those fiery darts from the enemy. Psalm 84 11 tells us the Lord is a sun and shield, and Christ is the object of our faith. We are to put on the helmet of salvation by guarding our heads and our minds with Christ because salvation is found in no one else. We are to take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. John 1.14 tells us, Jesus is the Word made flesh. So when the enemy starts shooting his fiery thoughts in your heart and mind, making you think you're defeated, you know what you got to do. The easiest way for me to remember to suit up each day is to pray through every piece of armor that I'm getting dressed in. As I'm putting on my clothes, I ask God to clothe me with his character. Wrap me up in his truth. Cover my heart with his righteousness. Guard my mind with his salvation and so on. And to keep me focused on the war, I mean, I spend time in his presence, praising him for who he is. A mental reminder that he is God and bigger than any problem or pain in my life. Reading his 
word and getting his advice for the day in seven worlds. And listening for his voice. Listening for his voice. Which remind me who my commanding officer is. The king of kings. Not my fears. Not my doubts. Not my wounds and definitely no regrets. Women warriors are trained to stand in the gap for the entire platoon. Yes. Even the ones that have shown you that you are not their type. They put others before themselves before they realize this war is all for one and one for all. They have to be willing to pray without ceasing and live in such a way that those coming behind them and want to know more about the God that they are fighting for. I think about Senator John McCain. When he and his fellow soldiers were captured and tortured for years, it went on and on. And one day he was finally given the opportunity to go, leave, go home. But he refused and responded, I will leave only when all of us can leave. That is the characteristic of a true warrior. A true warrior for Christ is one who no matter how uncomfortable it may be for them, they remember that it's not about them. It is all about Jesus Christ. Amen. The family of God and their witness to others. The beauty of God's provision and instruction are more than our minds could ever really comprehend. So I'm going to break it down just a little bit for you. When the enemy whispers in your ear, no one will really love you. Mm. Whisper in his ear, John 3.16. Mm. For God so loved the world mm. that he gave his only begotten son, mm. that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Yes. When the enemy whispers in your ear, you are a pathetic, poor excuse of a woman. Whispering in his ear, Psalm 139, 14. I will praise God, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are God's works, and that my soul knows very well. When Satan whispers in your ear, you should be ashamed of all those things in your past. Nobody wants to hear a thing you want to say. Whisper in his ear, Romans 8, 1. Never live a life of meaning and purpose. 
purpose so don't even try. Whisper back in his ear. Jeremiah 29. My heavenly father, my daddy, has told me for I know the plans I have for you. Plans to take care of you, not abandon you. Plans to give you a future you heard for. Hebrews 4, 12 says, For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our inmost thoughts and our desires. I don't care what anyone says or what words they may use to encourage me or put me down. I don't care what words anyone may use to describe me. Their words don't matter. And they don't even have an effect on me. They have no effect on my purpose, and they definitely have no effect on the calling that Almighty God has on me or His plans for my life. The Word of God is all that matters. And if you find yourself taking in the negative words of your posse, you better go to the Word of God. Hebrews 4 12 clearly tells us what we have in our possession. It is that which we need to live a full, productive, and victorious life. But the problem is that we as women have been so bogged down in our insecurities, our fears, traditions, and sometimes just plain old ignorance that we fail to tap into all the awesome that just the awesome that has been placed within us. I am in no ways bashing me. Because God knows I love Papa. Okay? <laughs> But it appears that we have either forgotten or ignored that we also were created in the image of God. This is in the Word of God, stand firm. I'm not going to say that what I'm saying is something that gets you all pumped up and ready to roll from or something like that. So we'll just say it is not something we ground our focus on because it causes us to take a seat in the middle of realness and accountability. Oh no, she didn't say the A word. Oh yes, she did. These times of war put our commitment to each other, our relationship to God, and most of all, our putting on the front line. I guess you're wondering what I mean when I say put. I don't want to keep you in suspense in a long time. I will just explain what I mean. I know you've all heard of praise or proof is in the pudding. Yeah. It is a challenge phrase similar to put up or okay. We say that we trust God to fight our battles. But when, once again, the time of battle comes face to face with our doubts and questions. And the rubber meets the road. It is then that we try to hide the fact. Maybe we do not trust God as much as we say we do. I remember, and I'm almost finished, I remember years ago when our son, Jay, and I call him names, was a little boy. He was playing, you might remember this, Ray, he was playing in the front yard of my daddy's house. He had a baseball bat in his hands and was practice swinging. Now, my parents had a room to go to. My parents had a horseshoe drive, okay? And a picket fence that follows the curb of the concrete. There was a stray dog that found his way into the yard and appeared to be coming towards Jay. I remember the look of fear on his face. And he was hollering and running and screaming. Now, Mother and I had long, made, long ago made it to the porch to watch it all unfold before I their eyes. As Jay was producing all this drum, Daddy <laughs> yelled, You got the bat in your hand, all you got to do is hit him and bust him open. <laughs> that day, even though Jay had the equipment to change the circumstances, he lacked the faith and focus to utilize the power and the authority that he was already holding in his hands the whole while. Thank God my dad was focused. Because me and my mom, we wasn't no help whatsoever. In closing, face each day 
with a clear reminder of who you really are in Jesus Christ. Live your life as a warrior woman, not as a wounded woman. Next time you are facing the new mercy of another day, and you feel you are not strong enough, and the enemy whispers in your ear, you are not strong enough to handle the storm. Suit up, wield your sword like Zena, the warring princess. Whisper in his ear, I am a child of God. Amen. A woman of faith, a warrior. And then shout in his ear, like a furious, fearless warrior that you are, and say, I am the storm, Satan. We are going to take on the world as a warrior, woman of Christ, of faith, standing firm on the word of God.